Okay, pens and papers out, please. It's time. Turn to your partner and say, strategies in the sexiest voice that you can. You know when Andy was talking about the lover, and you know when Chris came up and did his lover, I'm feeling that energy again. Oh, yes. So, we're now above the footings, and we're in the top of the foundations. By the way, if you don't have the foundations, you don't have a business. Mark always goes on about fundamentals. Fundamentals, Rob. It's all about fundamentals. Get the basics right, do them over and over, you'll be successful. Even though he sounds like quite a technical person, basics, fundamentals, do them right, keep doing them, repeat them, repeat them, repeat them, repeat them. But that's boring, Mark, Rob. Exactly, repeat them, repeat them, repeat them. And so many people get too creative and too all over the place to, to get the fundamentals right. So, the first thing you need to do and need to know as an investor, especially if you've got less than 10, is there are lots of properties that you could buy that are shit. And there's a certain amount of properties, less than you know, probably only about 10% of how many properties that there are that are good. And I want to help give you the model to find the best ones. And the model is the reason model. So if you want to remember it as a model, these are the reasons not to buy. And R stands for rundown. If you buy anything that's a bit of a shed, if it's got structural defects or you've got to move things around or it's slipping down a hill because it's got subsistence or subsidence, subside, there are two different things. The accountants will tell me the difference then it's run down. If it needs a lick of paint or it needs a bit of love, it's a refurb. Refurb's opportunity, run down, problems. Unless you're a structural engineer in the room, in which case you can monetize that skill. But if you're not, you probably won't. So that's R. What's the word, guys? R. Someone said R, that's the word. I think I'll go over this side. Um, just watch John. Uh, what's the word? What's the word? Run down. Okay, great. We're going to go over these at the end because I want you to memorize them. E is expensive. What's the word? Expensive. expensive. So if you buy anything that's too high end or too expensive, the rent will be lower than the mortgage or not high enough to give you a cash flow and you'd have bought a liability, not an asset. So it's very important to find that sweet spot of the highest rent to the lowest value. People always say to me, Rob, why do you buy such low end sheds? Drop boxes, as Mark calls them. You know, we pay 50 grand for most of our houses, or 55, or maybe 60 at the top end. Why? Because the rents are 550, and you can pay double for, the ha for a house in another area, and the rents are still 550. So you get twice the bang for your buck. It's really important. There's a sweet spot in your area where you live, and on our goldmine training, you can find that sweet spot. It's a, a, a total sweet spot. People say to me, oh, well, you know, there's none of them in my area because oh, I live in London. Well, I was talking to Bob, and he was talking about certain areas of London that are really growing, where his daughters want to live. I'll give you three areas right now in London that I know for a fact yield very well. I can remember two of them. <laughs> um, Plumstead and Thamesmead, I know for a fact. Mark will give you three or four more. I know for a fact. East side, growing, developing, and yield really well. You know, if you go to other areas that have already grown and developed, you're not getting the benefit that people ten years ago got the benefit. So, there's, you know, there's always an excuse that can be overcome. A is abroad. What's the word? Abroad. Oh, that was really good. What's the word? Abroad. What's the word? Abroad. What's the word? Abroad. It didn't get any better. I think I'll just give up. <laughs> abroad. So, if you buy a property in Bulgaria, you think you're getting a 30% discount, you pay 50,000 euros for it. Seven years later, you sell it for 20,000 euros. You had it rented out as an average two weeks of the year. Uh, you're paying the mortgage anyway. You have to go to the solicitor every three months and they have to translate all the contracts and you pay 90, 150, 200. You have to go out there two or three times to sort out all the problems in the two weeks of the year rent you did get. The letting agents took all that money. Is that a good deal? No. That was Mark's first deal. And it was really interesting what Mark said to me because I was taking the piss out of him a bit. Because the last year, because it, it was just before I got into business with him, and it was his worst deal, so I thought I got away with that one. I learned from him. Let him make the mistakes. Um, and the last year, he rented it out for about 10 days. And that 10 days was when I went skiing in it. And I didn't pay him any rent. <laughs> so officially, in the last year, he rented it out for zero days or months or weeks. 
He sold it. He'd lost sort of, he'd lost about 40 or 50,000 euro plus all other bits. And I said to me, geez, Mark, that must have been painful. And he said, well, yeah. But I actually feel brilliant now. It's a bit like the ex-girlfriend I had that I should have dumped three years ago and just stayed with her. It was a noose around my neck. I finally made the decision. I got rid of it. And that's my entrance fee. I thought it was a really smart way of looking at it. None of you can come into this business or grow without earning the right to be in this business. Roland's been in film for a long, long time. He didn't just pick up a camera and all of a sudden earned what he earned in his best year. He had to go through college and study and earn the right. Now the things work and the systems work. Property is no different. Yes, you can get rich a lot quicker, but you've got to earn the right. But no one in filmmaking, I don't believe, or any other doc, you know, being, being a heart surgeon, you can't go on a course for two grand at an event like this, learn how to be a heart surgeon for two days, get the year's follow-up support, and then you can go and make a load of money. But you genuinely can in this business. So some of you are sitting here saying, you know, I'm not really into the sales stuff, this will be enough knowledge for me. Well, actually, it might not. I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't give you opportunities in one course on two days to get all the learnings and then have the support because it'd take you 10 years to do it otherwise. And this is why this industry is so amazing. Okay, S is scattergun. What's the word? Is this useful, by the way, so far? Yes? Good. Scattergun. So, these are properties that are dotted all around the country. Please stand up, please stand up, please stand up. Patrick, please stand up. <laughs> and if we could have some music, please discuss with a new partner why you believe having properties dotted all around the country could be damaging to your wealth. Take a seat, music down, take a seat, thank you. Please take a seat, please take a seat. Please take a seat. Please take a seat. Okay, so what did you come up with? Feedback, fire it at me. Bring the energy this way. So increased cost, yes. Going all over the place, extra miles, not being able to manage people properly, yes. What else? Sorry? Too much time. It's not leverage at all, is it? How could it be leverage, yeah? Keep going. Lack of control. I mean, if you've got people who you know, lack of efficiency, was it? Yeah. yeah. Lack of efficiency, lack of control. You, sorry? Yeah, but you could buy it on the wrong street. I mean, in your own gold mine area, you know, because it's always the same, isn't it? I'll give you an example. North Breton to South Breton is split by a two-lane road with some bushes down the middle. That's it. It's about, it's, not, it's as long as this stage between North Breton and South Breton. North Breton, 170, 200 grand, 250 grand, 300 grand, no cash flow. Don't rent them out very quickly. Walk over the road, be careful. Climb over the bushes, be careful. Get to the other side, 50 grand shitholes renting out with 200 pound net cash flow per month profit with 115,000 people waiting for one. That much difference. How do you know that if you live in Lincoln, in, 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 about in Liverpool? How do you know that? Now, by the way, I'm not standing here saying, yeah, the reason model, designed by Rob Moore. Okay, we designed the reason model, but all of the things in it are our painful mistakes that we made that cost us money, that you leverage, and that we learn from. You know what, if it changed, then, you know, it would change. Maybe one day it will be the repon model. I don't know. 
because the next one, off plan, does change with the cycles. Because eight or nine years ago, just before the boom started, do you, do you, have you heard stories of people making money in off plan? If you had, put your hands up. If you get the right time of the cycle that Mark put up on the screen, you can buy, and two years later, before it's even built, it could go up 30 or 40%. That would be a good move. And in a rising market, if you're confident that it is, off plans work. But in the market we're in at the moment, they don't. And often, two or three years when it's being built, they'll ask you for a £25,000 more of a deposit. Does this make sense, by the way? Yes. Does it make sense? Yes. Good. And then new build. New build. Why not new? Why not new? Let's have some, let's have some feedback from this side, and certainly from the back. Why not new? Yeah, so you're going to be paying a higher price for sure. Why not new? Yeah, a lot of snagging to do, absolutely. Can't add value, absolutely. Yeah? Unknown, yeah. I mean, if it's new, there's no real comparables. If you buy something 30 years old and every house looks the same along the street, loads of comparables. So it's, sorry? Yeah, they push the prices up, don't they? They give you incentives, stuff. They're called throwaways. Low value to them, high perceived value to you. Gated entrance, the buzzer, plasma TVs, all this. And they'll charge an extra 15 grand. They're worth nothing. Nothing. When I was, about, when I was in my skint days, I uh, came back from university, I got a loan to get a car. The car was a Mazda 323 Sport. The loan was for £10,000. The car was £10,000. It was about one year old. In two years, I sold the car for three and a half thousand pounds. I still had the ten thousand pound loan. Didn't have money, enough money to pay it back. Mark taught me that if you buy a car four or five years into its six or seven year cycle before it then brings out the new model of car, all the sheen and the shine is taken off. Like a Jag, if you buy a five year old Jag, but it's still the new model, it looks exactly the same if it hasn't had a facelift five years on. You put a private plate, no one knows the difference, and you pay 15 grand for a 100 grand jag. And then what Mark does is sell it just before the new model comes out, because as soon as the new model comes out, the price drops even more. And that's what happens with new or old property. You buy 30 or 40 year old properties, 1960s, 1970s, ex development corporation, write all those things down that I've just said really fast. <laughs> it's the same thing. You buy something new, you're buying a 100 grand Merc, but when you sell it, you get the same thing. Really important. And by the way, if you want to completely cock it all up, do what Mark did. And he bought an overseas off-plan new build that was really expensive. <laughs> let's all mark at, mark at last expense. Yes, let's do that. Okay. So that's the reason model. Has everyone got it? I promise you, if you make any mistakes and the, found, the building falls down, it's probably because this foundation wasn't strong enough. And then nine out of, 99 out of 100 deals that you look at that aren't performing as well will just be because they didn't fit that model. Okay, we've got a brand new model for you. A brand new model. And this is the model for finding your gold mine area. Who likes the idea of being top dog investor in your local area? Who likes the idea of staying local and getting the best deals rather than having to travel too far? Okay, great. So this is the model that helps you do that specifically. And it's called castled. Why castled? Because you're building your own castle. So why reason? Because it's the reason not to. Why castled? Because you're building your own castle, your fortress. But it didn't fit with fortress, so it had to be castled. The anagram finders are really good for this kind of thing that I've been creating. Okay, so the first is cash flow. If it doesn't cash flow, turn it on. Pass it on. But it's got a lot of equity. Pass it on. If it's got a lot of equity, flip it. Don't keep it if it doesn't pump money in. Now, by the way, some deals you have to set up to cash flow because you have to put a bit of money in up front. Showed you two deals from Fran and Jane, and their cash flow kicked in at 900 or 600 after the costs have come in in three or four months. Those first few months are paying back the costs. If you raise the money from a JV partner, you don't have to do that. The second one is amenities. Now, it was interesting because the definition of amenities was not what I expected. So I'd like to explain to you, because I looked it up in the, in the dictionary. Because a lot of people think that amenities... Well, basically, I'll just tell you what it is. 
Amenities are anything in the local area that could or does increase the value of a property. I just used to think it was shops and services around, but it's anything. So amenities could be a regeneration project. Amenities could be a school. It could be, you know, a shopping centre. Amen you probably knew this, I just didn't. I got a new lesson literally last week. So amenities is anything in the local area that you think will supplement the, the, the value. In Peterborough, there's a £1 billion regeneration. That's an amenity to all of our properties. There's a brand new hospital that's been built, super hospital. That's an amenity to our properties. There's 20,000 new jobs being created, and people like Amazon and Ikea putting these huge warehouses. They're amenities to our local areas. The more of them you have, and the more of those you can find, the more of a gold mine area. But they're not the be-all and end-all, they're just one of the few. Does this make sense? Yes. Am I going at the okay pace? Yes. Yeah? Good. Okay. S is supply. If you live in the only house in the village, <laughs> doing Andy's pose, ladies, then of course there's no supply. If your gold mine area is the universe, then it's like a needle in a haystack. So there's a sweet spot. Too many houses, too difficult to find. Not enough houses, not enough for you. And you might think, well, I only need five a year, but if you want a package and make more money and be a business, then, of course, you probably need more than five a year. And if you focus and settle on your gold mine area, which you'll be doing when you come on the masterclass, which is the footing of being an investor, but you get the supply part wrong, it's going to be difficult for you. T is tenants. What's the word? What's the word at the back? What's the word at the back? <laughs> tenants. Bad tenants, bad investment. And I know some of us have felt personal pain around that. I certainly have. And I'll just give you a model in a moment of how you can work out whereabouts in your town or area gets the best tenants. Then we have local. What's the word? Local. So local is pretty obvious. I had someone ask me about the multi-let without the sweat, and you know they live quite rurally. If you live quite rurally, uh, then you need to find your closest area to you where this model works. It doesn't work in the middle of a field with no houses. And if they're literally you live on a street and there's three or four houses and 12 miles away is the nearest town, that's probably where your gold mine area is. 95 out of 100 people who've done our masterclass and they've done our specific gold mine area training on day four have found a gold mine area within 15 miles of where they live. Nine and a half out of ten. One and a half out of ten, 95 out of 100, however it works out, have had to go more than 15 miles away to find their gold mine area. Jill is one of those. She uh, lives in Berkshire, invests in Nottingham. But the key, the gold mine area doesn't have to be where you sit. It's obviously better, and nine and a half out of ten of you will get that. More importantly, it's that they're all in the same place that you know and manage, and you become the Donald. And then E is existing. What's the word? Existing. Existing. Existing means it's not new. And then G is discounts. If you're not buying it cheap, you're not buying assets, you make your money when you buy. And that's the castle model. So again, you have now, I believe, and I know we've put it into two words, so it might qu seem quite simple, but it used to take me literally about three quarters of a day to articulate what I've just talked to you in the last 20 or 25 minutes because we've made, managed to modularise it into these reason and castled model. So, quick test. R stands for? Run down. E stands for? Expensive. A stands for? Abroad. S stands for? Scattergun. O stands for? Off plan and N stands for new build. new build. Castled. This is, by the way, a test for me to see if my content is sticking in your brains. 
And if you don't know any of them, I have to go and make a new word. Uh, C stands for cash flow. Ah, everyone knew that one. A stands for amenities. S stands for supply. T stands for tenants. L stands for local. E stands for existing. And D stands for discounts. Burn it in your brain, my good friends. Burn it in your brain. I could finish right now and that would be all you need to build a successful portfolio from the foundations up, but I do have more for you. Who would like more? Great, okay. Right, so Bronx Manhattan then. So, yeah, Rob, this is really good. I'm getting into the nuts and bolts. But how do I actually know specifically where that sweet spot is in my area, you know, specifically? So... Our goldmine area training will give you everything you need. Essentially, we'll be spending about a third to half of a day with you, one-to-one, on a laptop, going through the right move and other uh, house search engines and the different types of websites that you need to find which give you postcode finders to how to find all the properties and compare the two and find the spread. That is essentially doing what this is. So here is Manhattan. So, you know, it's all Versace and Gucci. And then over here, we've got the Bronx, where everyone's popping caps in each other's asses and shooting up the crack. Anywhere in between is your goldmine area. Shoot up the crack, no dice. Too posh, no dice. So I'm going to come out of Trump Towers with my Versace bag, and I'm going to start walking through New York, through the districts, and you're going to stop me when you think you're at the gold mine area. You guys are dicing with death. Keep going. Right, you are officially dead. Okay, so interestingly, and this happens every time, most people start calling out just over halfway. Just over halfway in Peterborough is probably about £140,000 for a house. Now, I know in Kensington that doesn't buy a garage, but we buy houses at 50, 60, 70 grand. Corby, we're more like 50, 60. Peterborough, we're more like 70, 75. So way too high. The reality is it's as close to the Bronx as you could possibly get without being killed. And if you say to me, I had a tenant, they nicked all the copper pipes, they smashed the place, they reversed their white transit van in, and when they went out, they shot three of my neighbours. You're in the Bronx. But people, when they, when they get a Bronx house, they either give up or they over-exaggerate and try and find somewhere really nice. They have the same problem the other way around. They have the same costs the other way around because it's too expensive. You've got to go as close to the Bronx as possible. Very important. 